you, David. We're ahead of schedule, Eric. David Heathfield, uh, please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us where you are, and please tell us a story. Thank you, Eric. We are ahead of schedule, I think. A so few can, minutes. Yeah. I can take my time, can't I? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> So yeah, I'm David Heathfield. I live in Exeter in the UK, in England. I should start off by saying in Europe because I still consider myself to be a European citizen. I live in uh, the southwest of England in a city called Exeter. It's an old um, Roman city, one of the oldest cities in the country. Um, I live in the county of Devon, which is the furthest west county of England apart from one more county which is Cornwall and I mention this because the story I'm going to tell is set in Cornwall and Devon it's a story about two counties and there's a kind of there's always been a rivalry between yeah, these two yeah. counties um, Cornwall has its own traditions Devon is very in much part of the part of England Cornwall the people even today, some people want to be separate from England. They consider themselves to be a Celtic people, like the Scots or the Irish or the Welsh. And the Cornish language isn't spoken anymore, but it was spoken and is very similar to Welsh, for example. And I'm, I'm, I'm a storyteller. I'm also, I also run courses, for, particularly for teachers or anybody who works in education in the field of storytelling. And I love learning new stories. And when Eric uh, asked us a couple of weeks ago which story we were going to tell, I found myself in a dilemma because usually I choose which story to tell just you know a short time before I tell. But I need. But I I said to Eric, I, I could tell this story or this story or this story or this story. But he, I said, can I choose on the day? And Eric said, okay then. And I've been listening to this session. And I noticed a lot of the stories are personal stories that people have shared, either personal to you or, pers or, or true stories based on true experiences until Meher's story then, which was more of a folktale. I'm going to tell a folktale, but it, it, I'm, it's, a, it's a folktale I'm very connected to. Um, this is a story I've been telling for a very long time since I started storytelling. It's one of those stories that have been around. I haven't told it for a while. And usually I tell stories from other cultures, but this story is from my home culture, from UK. I, got, I found it originally in this book, Celtic Fairy Tales. It's a well-known book in the British Isles and, you know, uh, Ireland. And um, it was collected, these, this, the book was published in the 1890s by Joseph Jacobs. And the story is called The Tale of Ivan. And it seems this is one of the only stories that was found in um, in the Cornish language and in the notes over you know 130 years ago Jacobs writes the source of this story is Hlud in Archaeologica Britannia 1707 so it's more than 300 years since it was written down and um, it, it contains a uh, a specimen of Cornish then still spoken in Cornwall. I've used the English version contained in Blackwood's magazine in 1818 and I've taken the third council from the Irish version. So it's also a story that's told in Ireland as well. Now I want to, tr to try something out if you're okay with this. I'd, li I'd like to invite you to interact with me during the storytelling but in the chat. So not, not spoken but written. Um, so get your fingers ready, if you don't mind, and you can be my conscience because the story is the tale of Ivan and he's a man who faces dilemmas and has to make choices. So I would like you to give me your advice in the chat and you will be my conscience because Ivan is full of conflicting thoughts. He doesn't know what to do. So please help me to make my decisions. Is that okay? Yeah, wonderful. OK, let's begin. When Ivan left his home in Cornwall, he was full of sorrow. Cornwall faced famine. Terrible hunger raged. He could find no work and he was newly married. 
How could he support a wife? How could they have children when he had no money to rebuild the hovel where they lived? He had no land to farm and there was no work to be had. So Ivan, with his wife's blessing, left his home and walked and walked and walked through the county of Cornwall until he came to the great river Tamar, the river that separated Cornwall from England, from Devon. There was only one bridge in those days and Ivan crossed the bridge into a land where he had never walked before. And on he went through now the lush, richer county of Devon, a green county full of rolling hills, and walked and walked across the moor until he came to the great city of Exeter, a market city, a port. But still he had found no work. But outside of the city he came to a farm, and he walked up to the farmhouse door and he knocked. The door opened and there stood the Devon farmer. What do you want? I've come looking for work, said Ivan. And what can you do? I'll do anything that I am asked to do as long as I am paid. I need money, see, so I can go back home to Cornwall, buy some land and, and a house. Well, I could give you work, said the Devon farmer. Here are the terms. At the end of one year, I will pay you three pounds. Well, in those days, three pounds was a fair sum, and Ivan thought that might be enough. So Ivan set to work for the Devon farmer. But it was hard work on that farm. Ivan had to take care of the crops. He had to plant the seeds. But, you know, a flood came as it often does, and the seedlings were washed away, and Ivan had to sow a second crop. Ivan worked so hard learning new skills, he did his very best for that Devon farmer. And at the end of the year, after the harvest, which was plentiful, Ivan went to the door and knocked. What do you want, said the farmer. I must leave now, I've been here a year, I've come for my money. Ah, said the farmer. Ivan, you have worked well. I will give you a choice. You can have your three pounds, or I'll give you a piece of advice. What do you say? Well, Ivan was confused. I need my money. I, I need to go home to Cornwall. But now he offers me a choice between money and advice. What should I do? Tell me, what should I do? And tell me why as well. Write it down. I must know, should I take the money or should I take the advice? And Ivan thought and thought and all kinds of strange thoughts and conflicting opinions went through his mind. Perhaps the advice, perhaps the money. Please tell me why you've written what you've written. Ah, money is for now, says Ramya. Advice may be forever. Uh, money, because immediate need. I need it for my family. I need to build a new home. But then perhaps advice may last me longer. I need it now, immediately. Uh, Ivan was confused. He said to the farmer, Give me the money. I need to go home now. Ivan, I will give you a piece of advice. And the advice is this, never leave the old road to follow the new road. What does that mean? said Ivan. Never leave the old road to follow the new road? I don't understand. Give me the money now. Too late, Ivan. Ivan had no choice. He couldn't go home empty-handed, so he agreed to work another year on that Devon farm for that strange farmer. The second year was harder than the first. The work went on, he had to take care of the livestock, but the livestock were hard to manage. The sheep broke through the fence, they tumbled down over the cliff. Ivan had to rescue those that were still alive. A terrible freeze came that winter. Ivan had to break the ice to bring water for the animals. 
And then, as the summer came, there was drought. Ivan had to carry water from great distance. At the end of the year, Ivan came to the farmer and knocked on the door. I've come for my money this time. Give me my money. But you know what the farmer said. Ivan, you have worked hard indeed. Thanks to you, my livestock are healthy. I will give you three pounds or another piece of advice. <sighs> Ivan didn't know what to ask for. Tell me, what should I do? Give me your reasons. Let me see. Advice, says Puna. But why advice? I mean, the advice he gave me last year, I didn't even understand. He said, never leave the old road to follow the new. That's meaningless to me. A piece of advice, the man who is so satisfied with his work will not cheat him. Well, perhaps, but then he's from another land. You don't know if you can trust people from Devon when you're a Cornishman. Ah, another chance. Mayor says, be practical, be practical. I need to see my wife. Two years I haven't seen her. Give me the money. But you know what the farmer said. Ivan, I'll give you another piece of advice. And the advice is this. Always respect old age. I know that, said Ivan. Everyone knows that. What use is it giving me advice that I already know? Well, Ivan still had no money. I'm going home to Cornwall. But he couldn't go home empty-handed, so he agreed to work a third year. And whether you give me money or not, I will be leaving you at the end of this year. And a third year, Ivan worked on that Devon farm. But I can tell you, the work and the conditions were harder than the first two years put together. Can you imagine what went wrong in that third year? Go on, imagine, write it down. You wouldn't believe all the things that went wrong in the third year on that Devon farm. The farmer became old and infirm. In fact, the farmer went down with a terrible disease that was spreading through the land, not just in Devon, but across the all countries. That farmer was afflicted, but Ivan took it upon himself to nurse the farmer back to health. There was a hailstorm. The roof of the farmhouse was broken, and Ivan took it upon himself to fix it, climbing up at great risk to his own life. The crops withered, but Ivan again brought sources of water, built an irrigation system for the farmer. The horses that belonged to the farmer became lame. Ivan had to fetch the veterinary from great distance to bring care for those animals. And at the end of the year, when all had been remedied, Ivan went again to the farmer. Give me my money. Ah, said the farmer. Ivan, you are here again. Will you have money? Or another piece of advice? Well, you know Ivan was sick of everything by now. Give me my money. Please give it to me now. This last piece of advice, said the farmer, is the most important advice you will ever receive. Ivan, always be honest. Remember that. I'm an honest man, said Ivan. I've worked honestly for you for three years. You are dishonest. You will not pay me even though you assured me you would. I'm leaving. Before you leave, said the farmer, take this cake, carry this cake with you, and do not cut open the cake until your heart is full of joy. Well, grudgingly, Ivan took the cake and put it inside his pocket, and Ivan left that farmer with nothing, no money, 
angrily he walked away. And as he came through the great city of Exeter, he met a merchant, a fellow Cornishman. They didn't know each other, but being fellow Cornishmen, fellow countrymen, they walked together. They walked across the lush Devon countryside. They came to the high moorland, the wild place. And there, having shared many stories along the way, they found that there was a new road that had been built. Let's follow the new road, Ivan, said the merchant. We will surely get back to Cornwall more quickly. I'm in a hurry, are you not? Well, Ivan was in a hurry. What should I do, thought Ivan? Should I go with the merchant along the new road? What do you say? No? Follow old road. Follow the old road, you said. I hear a voice in my head. Follow the old road. So Ivan said, I cannot. Let us go along the old road together, my friend. No, said the merchant. Let's follow the new road. I'm going along the new road anyway. I want to get back more quickly. Goodbye, Ivan. And the merchant set off along the new road. Ivan along the old road. But within moments, Ivan heard a cry. Stop! Help! Help! I'm being robbed! Ivan ran down the new road to see his friend, the merchant, was being attacked by a robber with a knife. Ivan, without taking any care for his own well-being, leapt onto that robber, wrestled him to the ground, prized the knife from his grip. But the robber struggled to his feet and ran off down the road. Ivan helped his friend, the merchant, to his feet. Are you all right? I am, said the merchant. Thanks to you, Ivan, you saved my life. Ivan, I did well in my business in Exeter. Let me pay you. No, said Ivan, uh, you must not pay me. You are a fellow Cornishman. You would have done the same for me. I did not do it for the money. Come with me now along the old road. But still, the merchant would not listen. I'm following the new road, Ivan. I need to get back to Cornwall quickly. Both roads will take us to the same bridge over the river. Well, the merchant went on the new road and Ivan followed the old road. And the way was long for Ivan. But I can tell you now that it was the merchant that got to that junction where the old road and the new road met just before it reached the river. And as he reached that junction, the merchant saw that the clouds were gathering, a black sky a crash of thunder, and the rain poured down. It was raining so heavily. Oh no, there will be a flood, and if there is a flood, I will not be able to cross the river. And the merchant there on the road saw an old, old woman. She was drenched. Young man, young man, help me, she cried. My bag is heavy. I cannot carry it. It is raining. My cottage is by the bridge. Help me carry my heavy bag. I cannot help you, old woman, said the merchant. I must get to the bridge before it's washed away in the flood. And the merchant hurried on. Now along the old road came Ivan. The rain was still heavier than before. Ivan was soaked to the skin and Ivan knew the river would be rising and breaking its banks. And Ivan too saw the old, old woman beside the road. Help me, young man, help me! My bag is heavy, I am soaked, I must get to my cottage by the river. I cannot help you, old woman, I, I must get to the bridge before it's washed away in the storm. But as Ivan went on, you know what he thought. Ah, yes, Ramya. Always respect old age. <sighs> Ivan turned around, found the old woman. Give me your bag. The bag was heavy. He slung it on his shoulder and went with the old woman slowly along the path. She could not walk fast. By the time they reached the bridge, the river had risen so high that the bridge had been washed away. How can I get back to Cornwall? But then Ivan heard a cry. Help me! Help me! And Ivan saw there in the flood was the merchant drowning in the flood. Ivan waded into the fast 
flowing current reaching for his friend. Oh, but he could not. The current was too strong. What could Ivan do? But then the old woman said, Look inside my bag. And you know, don't you, what Ivan found inside the oh. old woman's bag. Yes, yes, me, Pandya Rajan. Yes, Sangita. There was a length of rope. And Ivan took that rope and he threw the end of the rope into the river and his friend the merchant caught hold and Ivan managed to pull him to safety out of the raging torrent. Oh, Ivan, you have saved my life again. How can I ever thank you? Let me pay you. My money is still here in my purse. No, said Ivan. You would have done the same for me. You're a fellow Cornishman. That day they could not cross the river into Cornwall, but the old woman gave them a place to sleep. They told stories into the night. In the morning the storm had calmed, the sky was clear, but the river was running deep and there was no bridge to get back to their homeland. But the old woman said, I have a small boat. And surprisingly, although she was old, she was strong stronger than you can imagine. Perhaps she would have been strong enough to carry that bag. And she rowed them across the flooded river. And when they reached the far side, they thanked her and walked on into Cornwall, side by side, the two friends sharing stories, Ivan and the merchant. And finally, they came to the village of Trerin, where Ivan was from, and they parted ways. But Ivan now had a heavy heart. He was coming home after three years with nothing to show for it. What would his wife say? He walked slowly. He came to the little hovel that he had left her in, still as miserable as before, and there outside on the road. Strange. What is this purse? Ivan picked up that purse. It was heavy and went inside. His wife said, Ivan, you're back. Wife, what's this purse doing outside in the street? I don't know, Ivan. Ivan emptied the purse onto the table and out of it clattered a pile of gold coins. We're rich, said Ivan. We're rich. Wife, <laughs> I brought nothing back with me from Cornwall, but here we have gold. Husband, said his wife. Tell me all that happened. And Ivan began to tell her the whole story. He told her about the first advice and the second advice. And when he got to the third advice, his wife paused. Husband, this gold, is it ours to keep? Well, Ivan said, it's, it's out there for anybody to find and we need it more than any other. But the purse, Ivan, the purse, there's only one who round here whose purse that could be. The great lord of the manor himself, the richest man who owns the land around here. Yeah, but Ivan said he won't miss a few gold coins once they've been lost and now we've found them. What was the advice, Ivan? Ah, yes, Ramya, always be honest. His wife persuaded Ivan, and I tell you, he didn't need much persuading, because he was an honest man, and he took those gold coins in that purse to the gates of the great lord of the manor's home. And there stood a guard. What do you want? You're a poor man away from here. You don't belong here. I have this purse. It belongs to the great lord of the manor. Give it to me. I'll pass it on to him. Ivan went home. He and his wife were living in abject poverty again. They had nothing to eat. They were practically begging for food. But then, three days later, there was a knock at the door. And when Ivan opened it, there was the great lord of the manor himself. Ivan, you have returned from your travels. Yes, sir. Um, sir. I was glad to return to you your purse of gold coins. 
I lost gold coins, Ivan, but I haven't been, f I haven't found them yet. But sir, I gave them to the guard. Together, Ivan and the great lord went back to the manor house. The guard's room was searched and under his mattress, that purse was found. The guard was banished from Cornwall, would never be able to return. Ivan, said the great lord of the manor, you have proven yourself to be an honest man and trustworthy too. I got into conversation with a merchant who told me your story, how you saved his life not once but twice. You are to be depended on, Ivan. Listen, you can be my new chief guard. You can help to protect my home. I will build a fine house next to mine. You can keep these gold coins, Ivan, as a reward. And, Ivan, you can tell the story of your life to all who pass through. Ivan went home to his wife to break the news. And I tell you, when she heard it, their hearts were full of joy. What did they do? Ivan remembered the cake that the Devon farmer had given to him. He took it from his pocket and cut it open. And can you imagine what he found inside that cake? Ah, nobody's guessed it yet. Think about it. How many years was Ivan away? Three. So how much money did Ivan find inside that cake? Yes, Sangeeta. Nine pounds in that cake. Nine pounds. His wages for the three years of work. All thanks to that strange and wise Devon farmer. I am from Devon. My wife Tammy is from Cornwall. This is a story I love to tell. I tell it to you. Pass it on. This is the tale of Ivan. Thank you for helping me. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody, thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Hi, David. What an amazing story and how you kept us engaged throughout. I mean, not a moment that we could uh, think of something else. Right there in the story with you, thinking of all the options, the advices and everything. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Yesterday, Wangari gave us a wonderful workshop on interactive storytelling. And I love interactive storytelling. Um, this is another kind of interactive storytelling where we can ask advice along the way and debate along the way. And this story suits that kind of storytelling. It was a spontaneous choice you made, David, to tell the story. Well, well, I, I saw that we were ahead of... I, I was a bit cheeky because I saw that we were ahead of time. Or, okay. you know, I thought I could I could spend a little bit more time. I didn't ask Eric's permission to do that. <laughs> David, there was a wonderful message in this uh, uh, a truth, a universal truth, actually. And uh, it was good that you reminded us all that what goes around comes around. It is a healing story. I mean, Ivan was really suffering. But all his goodness and his kindness, what he gave out to the world, he got back in the same coin. So, yeah, for me, that is the message of this story. I just felt, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you're going through something, how tough it is to be patient. So I could actually mm -hmm. feel Evan's test of patience. And I, and I kind of empathized with him each time he was told the advice and then he chose to work one more year that struck with me uh, so strongly but i'm glad it got rewarded in the end <laughs> so patience really is a virtue <laughs> uh, david yeah sorry 
thank you so much uh, david for that story we i really felt like i was in the story and it was truly healing because as all the you know loose ends were tied and all the resolution that was happening it really gave me so much comfort it was really com- it really gave me a lot of comfort thank you so much That's sorry good, vandana thank you thank you no not at all thank you so much ramya uh david your style is so distinctive so much to learn i am not into storytelling but all the same i'm sure i'm going to get into it very soon i mean if if i look at your style uh we've grown up with english language you know but going visiting british council i think that's something which my daughter has done much more than i have and uh, you know i feel really really so happy being a part of this and you know what i this story uh, what really resonated is that you know faith it is what survives basically the test of life i i thought it was really deep because whatever our issues and problems we have to have faith and uh, thank you so much once again thank you uh, i just want to quickly respond to what vandana just said it's interesting you mentioned the british council i did a webinar uh, three days ago for the british council and it's there on youtube if you're interested about uh about storytelling online so it's yes. it's it's there as a free webinar and also um i do i run courses so i'm doing a course starting in a couple of weeks about storytelling for teachers yes and also i'm involved in the world storytelling cafe which it's not the same as the world storytelling institute it's based in the uk and on the uh 6th of march we're having our next session especially for asian and australian storytellers because usually we do our events in the in, in the evening when everyone's in india is in bed so if you want to come to an event on the 6th of march in the evening in india then have a look at the world storytelling cafe we would be very welcome if you come and join us thank you thank you so much i will do my research i will be in touch we i would love to love to watch you and um, thank you so much once again and my next course starts on the 13th of march <laughs> if anybody's interested i i know i know i i'll do all the research i'll find out so <laughs> i think there there will be people who be oh, and, and i'm doing a workshop here <laughs> next saturday as well aren't i eric oh, yes yes you shouldn't yes. forget that yes yes <laughs> absolutely thank you uh, david uh, okay i think i can talk am i audible yeah eric? i can hear you yeah okay thank you david you made a very very simple story amazing see there is one fellow who is working for just 3 pounds okay that was a big money at that time and he goes back with instead of money he goes back back home with three advices and he was so honest and he was what that is a simple story but the in you which you told this story will remain in everyone's mind forever that is the success of the storyteller now you were telling you were describing everything see if you have not made is an interactive storytelling um, methodology i would have been immersed from the beginning maybe when the, the farmer is meeting that uh you want for the second time or third time see after that i cannot see david i cannot see anything in front of me i saw this see my uh, uh, laptop i'll be there in the sceneries in the road in the old road or near road or the bridge or uh, in the on the home reaching the home without money and meeting his wife and cutting the cake and finding the nine pounds everything was in front of me nothing else was that such a wonderful description but for the interaction interaction has really disturbed me from my okay <laughs> that's interesting that happens to yeah. some people yeah, that, yeah. That often, but yeah. but because because your description was taking me there that is the success of uh, david it's really interesting that can work both ways for some people it might be very distracting and off putting for other people it might be what engages them and it's 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 really interesting to hear that perspective But, no you. if you are not a good storyteller the interactive session would have been effective and uh, whatever i deliberately gave a wrong choice you deliberately left my choice you wanted to choose only your own uh, comfortable oh, yes, way I, for I your it, own story i know it wasn't a genuine choice but it was a genuine conflict in ivan's mind 
you know, every time you wanted to take only advice e- even if somebody is uh, suggesting money because you want the story that way so you have already decided then what is that interaction <laughs> okay thank you thank and you. i think david it's a, a cake was a very good metaphor i think i am going to use it in some stories because it worked beautifully that we were all waiting when the when will be the time be to cut the cake <laughs> Yes, I was waiting for that to do. <laughs> I was thinking when they are going to cut the cake. I was waiting for the moment, and finally, when they did that, did that, I felt too happy. And uh, when we, when David told that there was nine pounds inside the cake, yes, it was a good way of getting rewarded for all the years of uh, time spent working. That was good. <laughs> Anuradha's comment reminded me of how we do things. You know, when we are going out to do something. something like an exam or something a sweet is given you know and uh, something nice happens a sweet is offered yes. or given you know so uh, there is a lot of that's why uh, the, we felt a lot of connect uh, indirectly because a lot of uh, messages that in your story are under the surface you just need to peel you know keep peeling them and there are so many meanings you know out there and there was a feeling like we have the lost and found feeling lost and then found you know it that thing came into my mind thank you so much david all your stories are very beautiful thank you oh thank you very much of yes, course we celebrate with sweets rightly said kajal that was a good moment thanks david for sharing the story and the way of storytelling that was totally different for me and you gave us an insight into how we have to do an interactive storytelling that was really good thank you thank you for this I should also say that I did a little mending with that story as well because there's a lot of there were some stereotypes in that story. I I changed the behavior of the wife for example because as in a lot of the traditional stories this story is very similar even though it's a Cornish story it's also very similar to some stories from the Middle East. Uh, a lot of Turkish stories have the three pieces of advice or the Arabic stories. and often the the wife character and in the even in the, uh, the 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 cornish version is not so not so understanding so i i made it a collaboration a very a very uh, positive model from the wife i think that's important to to sometimes mend stories okay we are going to proceed to the next session thank you very much david